Thank you very much, Laia, for a wonderful presentation. Um, we have five minutes for questions and answer, and um, so uh, I would open up the floor to those of you who want to ask the question. We'll monitor the chat. Um, I think Eduardo Franco has a question, and then maybe see yeah. San Jose. Eduardo, you can go with your question. Uh, I, I mean, I, I concisely put it in, in the chat already. Like, great presentation. Oh. Now, this is, I know you're working towards the scorecard, and I think this is a great component for a future scorecard for countries, right? Because you're capturing also the time train. Yes. So <laughs> many thanks for, for putting this. Yes, I was, re this is very difficult uh, to put in the scorecard, but I think this is very relevant because, uh, no, uh, it will can be a, an additional factor that also, you no, know, for countries see that the efforts you not know, to improve the coverage rates, how this, you no, know, uh, translates on an improvement in the in the protection of the women, you no, know, so that they keep doing efforts to improve the rates, even if it's four points, three points coverage every year. But this is kind of important because if I may follow means, up with one question, I mean. Wouldn't countries that are already doing well? I mean, you do, you did have a point about uh, countries that are began low. Eventually, they had more of an improvement that was significant. But you would not expect that countries that are already doing high with a high coverage, eventually they can't improve much higher than that. So, isn't there some sort of uh, uh, asymmetry in how you look at countries, uh, whether they're improving or not? No, yes, this is definitively so. Yes, we are doing kind of an stratified analysis by the baseline coverage because it's what you said. No, if you are already at ninety percent coverage, no, it doesn't make sense that you will improve much more from that. Yes, but very few countries start with that. It's what happens with with HPV vaccination. Not that really, no. Uh, we were discussing no uh, with uh, Paul Bloom. Sometimes that kind of we sometimes we think no 70% coverage it's really a very good performance with HPV vaccine, and th this is not the case with other vaccines that we think not that 70% uh, coverage is a failure. But our our <laughs> sense is that so maybe we have sh we have to start not thinking and together with the elimination goal not to start thinking about you not know, pushing a little bit more to try to reach this 90% coverage. But again, I think another important point is that, and maybe you not know, to link it with the, our previous uh, discussions about the first dose, you not know, that really countries perform much, much better with one dose. And these are, this is very important as well. So it seems much more easier for countries to reach higher coverages and maintain them over time only with one dose vaccination. So the question that uh, Sylvia asked about, do you think these trends may influence the impact of COVID? Do you have any thoughts about how a potential COVID Im impact could reflect here? Yes. Well, we do expect no, that uh, these coverages will change and this will be kind of a disruption now, like we will see no, a change in the trend, like a vaccination crisis. But we have to wait a little bit to see you know, the capacity of countries you know, to recover from that. It's not a confidence um, vaccination crisis, COVID. It's just about the, 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 the delivery you know, disruption. So maybe the capacity of all countries to recover and you know, the good news about HP vaccination is that we have like a window of opportunity, you know, um, more wide than for other vaccines. So maybe we will have more time to catch up and this over time will improve. I don't know if also this may be an opportunity you know, when trying to recover from the COVID disruption to try to also to, to aim again to higher HP vaccination rates that the the ones that were previous from the cover and from the COVID. Uh, Thank, you. Thank you very much, Laia and and 
Jacopo, can I ask you to make some finalizing comments around, over the session? We have uh, we're we're a couple of seconds over time, so thanks for a short uh, conclusion. Yes. Okay. So for the for the first part, I think the key points are that basically study is not designed to 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 study one dose. Clearly, show that one dose works. But at the end of this year, we should have results coming out from study design, starting at least having results from des study design to measure one, to measure the impact of one dose. So that's very promising. Uh, the, the other point is that we have to really understand if to discriminate between one dose and uh, two delayed doses, um, delayed interval between two doses is how long the, the immunity lasts. And then the last point is that these, these adopting one dose may lead to considerations of the, um, which age target is better. And then for, for the for final one for, from Laia, uh, the point is that we have, it's, it's important to, to push the country to start as well as they can, I think, with, uh, with the vaccination to invest immediately, to prepare it very well and to, and to invest as much as they can for a good start. And that is, uh, it will return in investment if we can say that. This is my, my conclusions. I hope they, they are good. <laughs> Thank you for Thank everyone. you. And we're handing back to Alex for the next chair. Mm -hmm.